I'm just going to come out and say it. I know it's unpopular, but I feel that David Sullivan played a bit of a blinder yesterday. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know it's not popular, we're all meant to be angry, aren't we? But I just can't be, I think it was the best deal uh, for almost all concerned. And really, in the scheme of things, I think the loan deal was the best option for reasons I'm going to go and explain. The how we got there, maybe, maybe not too palatable, but I think the suggestion is that uh, Brentford might be hard done by. They're going to be all right, Brentford. Let's let's be perfectly honest. They're probably the best run Championship club. In fact, they're better run than West Ham. They, they really they really are a very very well run club. They've just trousered the best part of twenty eight million for Ollie Watkins. They're going to get a massive loan fee for their player, and if he ain't injured, then realistically they're going to get an awful lot more. So they're all right. They're not one of the one of the Championship or lower league clubs. I'd be feeling sorry for at the moment. And let's be honest, it's it's we've. Done a transfer in our favour. I don't know why we'd start to get annoyed about that now. I was ready to be annoyed when we didn't do a transfer in our favour, when actually we did things wrong. I'm more annoyed with how we conducted the Sebastian Haller business, which completely hedged in favour of the selling club, Frankfurt. In this instance, it's hedged in favour of West Ham. Brentford will be all right. I don't feel particularly sorry for them. But why would we start now? We didn't feel sorry for Valencia when they were trying to get Faguli to sign a new contract. And we basically went and nicked him and took advantage of the situation, then sold him the best part of 12 months later to Galatasaray at five million quid. I mean, we've got to, we've got to look after West Ham, surely. Yeah. But that's really not my my point. The suggestion is at the moment, if in case you don't know, is there have been some sources that, that indicate Brentford are uh, suspicious that that Ben Rama didn't fail the medical. They they think we might have been playing a bit of a sneaky game here. I, I, I'm not so sure. I, I'm not so sure. I, I said it numerous times yesterday. I'm not sure we could coerce a hospital and a Ben Rama and everybody into making up these false claims. What we may well have done is there may have been a, a slight irregularity in the medical and then maybe, quite possibly, Sullivan has looked here and thought, oh, hold on a second, I might be able to uh, make something out of this. A big enough issue to stop Ben Rama playing? No. It's clear that Ben Rama is fit and it's clear that Ben Rama is ready to play. At that point, did he, did Sullivan think, mm, I might be able to negotiate something a little bit different here? Quite possibly. Did he do that? Yes. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But first of all, I don't just want to be up on Sullivan for the sake of it. I mean, if we want to beat up on Sullivan, let's do it for the stadium move. Let's do it for selling Grady and Garner when we didn't mean to, for being sneaky and sly. Let's do it for not backing the manager. Let's do it for leaving this farcical situation until so late in the transfer window that we had to start lodging new paperwork with people to try and get it extended. The the biggest the biggest problem with this transfer window has been Grady and Garner number sale number one number two it has been the issue that we've left it all so damn late this should have all been done two months ago want to beat Sullivan with a stick that's the one I'd use it for however having got there today today yesterday was the best business and it was the best business for West Ham why because I was I was all prepared to come on and do a video about how I. I thought we'd be wasting. I, I was going to do a video saying it would be foolish to waste £30 million on a player that the manager is not convinced about. Now, bearing in mind that was what I was going to say, how it's played out, it would be disingenuous of me to say that it that what's happened now is a bad thing. Actually, I think it's a really good thing because I think what it does, it allows David Moyes the opportunity to have a look at Ben Rama and decide if he likes Ben Rama or not. Now, there may be an obligation to buy. It may be an option to buy. I'm working on the assumption that it's an option. I don't think you'd go through all of this and then put an obligation in because you don't give yourself the wriggle room. With the obligation to buy, then actually it takes that pressure off. The whole, the whole suspicion that David Moyes has got his team, has got his first team, he's got his pattern of play and Ben Rama doesn't fit into it. Therefore, Ben Rama goes on the bench. And because David Moyes doesn't really use people from the bench, Ben Rama's a waste of money. That all goes now. That's not the case. In fact, the pressure is completely off. And once we set aside our disappointment for Brentford, once we set aside the fact that he kept us all hanging, and I've got to be honest with you, 
yesterday transfer deadline day made me leave the house three hours later than I really wanted to and, com and really mucked up my day, quite frankly. Once I pulled that outside, actually, it may well be a very, very good bit of business. In fact, I do wonder if someone like Crystal Palace might have liked the option to have a look at Eze for a whole season before parting with their 21 million quid or whatever it was. I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. But I am not disappointed with this at all. And I do. Th I think, one, you know, look, whatever happens in this transfer, if Ben Rama flops, well, OK, that's fine. We're sort of covered. We can deal with that. If Ben Rama is a success, well, that's good as well, because we're, we're covered for that. With the permanent transfer and, and the, the big bucks up front, we were not. We we had we had no security whatsoever. Maybe just maybe, it was true that the manager wanted Josh King. Quite possibly, it got towards quite late in the day, and maybe Sullivan thought, "Oh, hold on a second, I'm taking a lot of risk here with a lot of money. What if the manager doesn't fancy him? Because of course, he's only an appreciating asset if he does well. If you buy the player for twenty five million, he doesn't play any Premier League football. You can't then sell him." For 25 million. We've seen this with Anderson. We've seen it with Haller. So maybe, just maybe, he thought, well, okay. And there's a compromise. That's that's one way of looking at it. And that's the way that I look at it. We've got the player. We've got the player that people wanted. He looks an extremely skillful player. He's got a real opportunity to impress. Um, it's it's relatively risk-free. And, and for that... Look, we'll be doing other videos. I've got more and more stuff to do on David Sullivan, and some of it ain't good at all. But I don't want to be angry for angry's sake on this. I really don't. I'm actually looking forward to seeing the player, looking forward to seeing what he can do. think the deal's good. Looking forward to the Tottenham game. I'm actually looking forward. I couldn't quite tap into this. Um, I found it. It was ridiculous. I mean, we are so badly organised. I actually found yesterday funny. Somebody put on the... Um, on the comments, I actually started yesterday's video by laughing. I did. It was so ridiculous. I had a completely different video planned. We didn't know who we were signing. It found a medical. I was about to go out. I had to stay in. The whole thing was was preposterous, really. It, it really, really was. And, and I read the comments, and then I went onto social media probably more times on, on transfer deadline day than I have done in the last two months. And... I mean, everyone's going crazy, and, and there was so much conspiracy and everything on there. And I don't, I, look, I can understand why people were frustrated and how that transfer deadline day panned out. And what was going on, I would totally agree with that. But I do think what we ended up with was okay. What I'm annoyed about is him putting us all through the ringer, not only on that final, that's well, it's the second, how can there be two transfer deadlines? But the second transfer deadline day was not only putting us through the ringer there, but putting us through the ringer for the whole two months. That was completely and utterly unnecessary. I do think we'll need to have a little look about what happened with the with the whole defensive thing. Um that that the defensive um, target was a priority, but maybe again, when you look at it, we brought in the fullback in Sue Fowl, we brought in the um, the centre centre half in Dawson. Again, it might not have been everybody's favourite, you know, um, might not have been the one everybody wanted, but it's a bit of cover uh, for a sticky situation. Um, it, it's it's turned out okay, and we brought in a. I would imagine a versatile wide player who can also play in a number of positions. The only question left i think in terms of buying um is whether the manager wanted him in selling i don't think it's quite so good i, I think the dn garner thing was wrong i don't know why we got rid of josh cullen i really don't i think we're we're paper thin in um in terms of cover on central midfield and, and i've got to be i've got to be brutally honest with you if declan bearing in mind the system we're playing i think if declan rice and thomas socek drop out or get injured for any reason i i'm not i'm not overly um enamored with the thought of mark noble or um robert snodgrass dropping in there i think um cullen would have been a better option on that one so i'm, I'm not thrilled with the departures the arrival safel really happy excellent excellent player ben rama i think he looks good uh dawson he's he's cover i i didn't i think you'd have been hard pressed in all honesty to get let's say we had of signs Let's say we signed the fella from Marseille, the, the centre-half. 
I think I don't think he would have walked into the team. I don't think he would have displaced a Balbuena or Bonner or Cresswell for the next game. I think they played really well. How can you get rid of people kept a clean sheet? So maybe cover was all we really needed in that one. Maybe Moyes switched his attention and wanted to pay the bulk of the money on attacker. He certainly appeared to be happy enough to spend 15 odd million of it on um on Josh King anyway. But what I'm going to do from uh, from now on with this um with this player and with this transfer, and I'm talking about Saeed Ben Rama here, is I am going to work on the assumption that David Moyes was notified. I don't want to get annoyed about something that ain't happened yet, if you know what I mean. If I see with the evidence of my own eyes that that Moyes ain't picking him, Moyes clearly don't fancy him, we'll deal with it, and we really will. Everybody will have an awful lot to say. But I'm going to work on the assumption that actually Moyes did sign off on it. In the end, he turned around and he said, no, I will. And I'm going to work on the assumption that Moyes is not such... Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it looking like a Moyes player. I've got to be honest with you. I'm really struggling, but I'm trying to get my get my head around it a little bit. But then again, as I say, he's signed one matter and he's signed um, a Pinar and a Kevin Morales. Was that his name? I think it might be. The, the guy at Everton. So he, he is willing to sign sort of skillful players... And use them as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that he does see a future for him. I'm also not gonna I'm not gonna spit me dummy out when I don't see him play in the first game. Now my understanding is he wouldn't be available for Tottenham anyway. And the reason I'll do that is for the per the reasons that I said earlier on in the week, and that is that when Jared Bowen came in. David Moyes was at pains to explain to everybody that you can't rely on this boy from the championship to come in and save us. He eased him in. I think the first two or three games, he came on as a sub, and one of them was quite late. And a lot of us were saying, well, hold on, Moyes, come on, you just spent 20 million on this kid. Play him, play him. But Moyes was reticent. Moyes was, uh, was very, very slow in the way that he introduced the player. So I'm not going to read too much into the fact if Ben Rama comes off the bench quite late in the first two games. If we get 10 games in and he's not using Ben Rama, then, then I think some of our suspicions may well prove founded. They really may. But at that point, at that point, we may turn round, we may well look at the deal, and the fact it's a loan deal, and we might well think to ourselves, thank God that's a loan deal. I mean, I, I know I'm not... I, I know I'm not singing from the um, um, the, the the orthodox hymn sheet, uh, let's say, for want of a better analogy. Um, but I do think this one's all right. I, I I'm I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with this one. As I say, annoyed that it it kept us hanging. Annoyed that I would flaming check in social media and talk sport and Sky Sports news and the phone was buzzing and everything and people didn't know whether they were coming or going. Um. They'll be I'm annoyed at that, and there'll be there'll be plenty of time I think to pick a fight with Sullivan over numerous things. I think there's a suggestion as well that maybe he wanted to do the loan deal because he didn't want to put the outlay of money because he's selling up. Maybe I mean maybe, but even if that's the case, it still makes it a good deal. Um, wh where it would be a bad deal, by the way, would be if it was a loan deal and he was brilliant. And we didn't. The option to buy wasn't exclusive. I think that's the only thing I'd I, I would put as a caveat to everything that I've just said. The loan deal's good. The loan fee, the three million, whatever, which comes off the, the fee of, the twenty million or whatever it is. So it's, we either pay twenty million, then it's the three million, then some add on add ons, and it becomes a twenty eight million pound transfer. That that's absolutely fine. But what is important after the end of the loan is that we get to say we get first option. So we have an option to buy. But no, and no, but nobody else can come in. Tottenham can't come in and say, "Oi, actually, we'll have him." I think, as long as that's the case, and I think it is, and he's fit, which I think it is, then I do believe we've pulled off a very, very good transfer that that suits the player, suits the owner, and suits the manager. I mean, it's fair enough, isn't it?